Hey everyone, welcome into this week's edition of Lauren's Lane. We're here in Jack's Beach Oceanfront. There's a reason for that. I'm about to talk to Carissa Moore, Olympic gold medalist and five time world champion. Oh, Carissa is an amazing human being. You're about to find out more about her. As always, Lauren's Lane is presented by Dome Hats. If you need hats for your company or your team, go visit my friends at Dome Hats, domehats.com, or go see their store just down the road on 3rd Street. I'm joined by five-time world champion and Olympic gold medalist, Carissa Moore. Carissa, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you won your first world championship 10 years ago. What is it like to win something that big at age 19? Uh, it was it was a dream come true. I mean, that be, winning a world title was something that I, that was my goal since I was a little girl. And so um, I, I never really thought about like the age that I was doing it, but to have it I think come true at any point in my life, what it, it, it was just, it was surreal. It felt, I was overwhelmed with joy and it, it was, it, it was, it was great. So you've won it four times since then. How does each time change? Um, yeah, every world title has been a little bit different. Um, every year I think I go in with kind of a different motivation and some different goals and objectives in mind. and. You're never going to win the same. It's always just you you got to change and adapt and, and evolve. Um, but yeah, since then, I feel like I've grown a lot as like a person and a woman and and as an athlete as well. So I think and I think through surfing, like the level has really, you know, upped itself. So, yeah, a lot has changed since then. Now, when watching you in the Olympics, would you say that the roundhouse cutback was how you won? Um, <laughs> the Olympics, uh, I, I don't know if there was, if it was like the roundhouse cutback that got me to win. I think it was more just my ability to adapt because the conditions were really, really tricky. And I, I wouldn't say that maybe it was some of the best performance surfing I've ever done, but I was able to, it was, you know, we got a typhoon and it was, it was storm surf. There was a lot of current, there was a lot of water moving. It was very chaotic. And so I think I was just able to keep my head and find some simplicity in the chaos. Which is a really good way to put it. When it comes to competitive surfing, how different is that than just regular surfing? And do you even get to just go out and surf for pleasure these days? Yes, I mean, I, I still have so much fun surfing. Surfing um, is like my love and my passion, but I mean, the goal is to compete how you surf every day and to be able to find that freedom and that joy. And. Um, I mean, that's been kind of like my overarching theme and like goal lately is just to be able to like surf more with more freedom. So, um, yeah. Well, obviously one of your sponsors is Red Bull. Uh, certainly thanks to them for that. You're here for the Supergirl Surf Pro here in Jack's Beach. There's a ton of events surrounding it. We've got concerts, we've got yoga classes, everything. You're also going to be mentoring some young girls this weekend. What do you think is going to be the difference between the waves you're used to surfing and the waves here in Jack's Beach? Hey, this is Jeff Whitaker with Dome Hats. Do you need custom hats for your team or your business? Or you just want to see what we've got for sale in your favorite Florida State or Florida gear? Come on down to the bar here in Jack's Beach. We'll be waiting for you. Oh, uh, I mean, I think the biggest difference is, you know, I grew up in Hawaii, so I surfed reef breaks my whole life. And, you know, waves that break on reef, the waves are come in pretty much the same place every time. Whereas, you know, here in Florida um, the, in, and in Jack's Beach, it's, it's a sand bottom. So it constantly moves, the tide changes, the wave itself. And I think there's a, a little bit less power here compared to waves back at home. Yeah, and certainly that makes sense for people who've ever surfed here. That's exactly what they would say. As far as your charity, you do a lot to empower young women. Why is that so important to you? Oh, I mean, um, well, I, I'm, I'm stoked to be here. I'm, I feel really fortunate to have partnered with Supergirl and with my More Aloha Foundation. They've really helped create a beautiful platform to put on these events. And, 
giving back just I, honestly it feeds my soul it brings me a lot of joy and a lot of happiness and I think just seeing the genuine stoke from the girls and how, how they're able to create friendships and feel more comfortable in their own skin from the events like that's why you do it and to just encourage them to chase their dreams to go big and know that they can do anything they put their mind heart and mind to um I I, I truly get so much from these events um as much as you know I'm giving back. I feel like I receive so much in return. I've only been to Hawaii once in my life. Got to go to Oahu when I was in my early 20s. But for people who've never been, where do they have to go? Oh, tough question, I know. It's super tough question. Um, all the Hawaiian islands are beautiful. I'm from the island of Oahu and I live in Honolulu. And so I live really close to like Waikiki mm -hmm. and Diamond Head. And so, I mean, I know it's super touristy, but there's just a lot of beauty and tradition in Waikiki, which I highly recommend go, going and checking out. And then, you know, an hour drive away, you can go to the country and escape and check out like the powerful and challenging waves of like the North Shore and Pipeline and Sunset and Hollywood, those places you hear about um, all over the world. So at what age did you figure out, OK, I'm pretty good at this? Because uh, it had to be pretty young. Uh, you, you know, um, I mean, I, I started surfing when I was about five years old and all thanks to my dad, he pushed me into my first wave. And I think, it, you know, it was around like nine or 10 when we, when I remember having a conversation with my dad about like really pursuing surfing as my passion. And it was because of his belief in me, maybe more than I even believed in myself and hit the way that he saw my potential and what I could do with it that like really encouraged me to, to keep going. And I think that's a super special thing. My dad is the reason that I work in Sports Talk Radio because he really pushed me into loving sports and embracing not just playing, but also talking about them. So I love that. All right, final thing. Are you going to win this event here at Supergirl Surf Pro? No, no pressure, Carissa. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, my, my biggest goal for this event is just to have a lot of fun. Uh, my priority is honestly the Marloha Foundation event that we have going on tomorrow. And I just I'm excited to cheer on the next generation. This is an important event for a lot of the regional surfers to qualify for the challenge your series next year so um you know i'm fortunate that i already have a spot on the championship tour next year so i'm just looking to have fun to enjoy this beautiful place interact with the people and uh create some good memories well i hope jack's beach treats you super well because you are a fantastic human being and obviously we're super excited to have you surfing in this event <laughs> thank you for having me Thank you so much for watching this week's edition of Lauren's Lane. Remember, go to domehats.com for all of your hat needs. Like this one, that's domehats.com.